Good morning. Today is September 20th of 2024, and this is Heart Transplants. It's by Shrita Jazz, Fernando C. Violet F. Montez K. And Jose M. So, as a member of a major hospital's review board, there are five potential candidates to receive a heart transplant. All of these people, candidates, have the same percentage to live after the heart transplant. So candidate A is a female at the age of 41 who has a child. B, candidate B is a male at the age of 59 who is poor. Candidate C is a female at the age of 30. Candidate D is a male at the age of 45 and is of good health. And candidate E is a female at the age of 35 who has chest pains. The research question is, which candidates should receive the heart transplant? All right, so these are our criteria for who should receive the heart transplant. First of all, we're taking a look at the economic status of the person. Can they afford the surgery? Do they have insurance? And will this uh, send them into a generational debt? Second off, we have health. Will they be able to survive the, the, um, the surgery? Now, most people in this list do have alcoholism or smoking problems, which could negatively deteriorate their health and impact them after the surgery. And third, we look at family. So, do they have any relatives? Are there any people who depend on them for a living? And how is their uh, social relationship with their family? Okay, so for those reasons, we choose this and this. But why didn't you choose the others? Even though person A has a child, her kid doesn't have her, and she also doesn't have a husband, so nobody can take care of her when she, if she die or if she has the heart transplant. She also is an uh, alcoholic, so she might have another problems with health related. Person B, he's a, he's a smoker and he also drinks a lot, so he also has high blood pressure, which means he also has another health related problem, which means even though he received the heart, he might have some trouble in the future. And also, he doesn't have the conditions to pay the heart transplant. He's actually very poor, so yeah. Okay, so person C, pros and cons. Active lifestyle. This is important because when you have an active lifestyle, this means that the recovery is gonna be like better and so more like smooth compared with another like person on the list. As a personal trainer, so she actually hits the gym. That's actually very good. Uh, can work remotely after a surgery and more hours means more money. So while she's recovering for all of this stuff, she can actually work more and make more money for her and her family and friends and stuff. Cons, cons are like no time for family and won't be missed if she dies. This is sad, but I mean, nobody cares of her, so that's a bad point on it. And smoke cigarettes, drinks at, uh, on a daily. So no help even if she trains. This is a bad, bad fact because Recovery and stuff is gonna be made so much difficult when you have like heart problems with even cigarettes and drinking. So person E, only problems is like this John, recovery is gonna be better, but the cons is unhoused, no family, so where is she gonna stay before the surgery, after the surgery, and no, no one's gonna help recover, she's by her own, and no insurance, so who's gonna pay for the surgery? That's a uh, expensive thing. Surgery. All right, so why did we choose patient D? Well, here he we can see his financial situation. The insurance is gonna be paying for most of the surgery and we can assume that this surgery is not gonna be on the cheap end, the low end of $750,000. So it's good that he's gonna get his insurance company to pay for most of it. Not only that, but he's got enough funds to pay for the rehabilitation process, the recoveries, the checkups that follow after. Also, he lives in an upper class home with a family of five. That's not very cheap in this modern day economy. So we can obviously see that he's got some money to pay in case any, uh, he needs any further treatment. He's a family guy. He has a wife, three girls, and his death would impact the most amount of people around him. It would impact a total of four people. And also, his family can be there after he's recovering from the surgery. He doesn't drink, he doesn't smoke, and he doesn't have any health implications apart from his uh, cardiovascular failure. And the only con that he has is his age of 45. But that's really not that bad since he isn't the oldest on the list. Now, 
Here is the finances more in debt. He has insurance, he lives in the upper middle class, he has a family of five and he has a job. His insurance is gonna pay for most of the thing, so that's pretty good, he doesn't have to pay out of pocket. He being in the upper middle class means he has a lot of space to work around, he probably lives in a very good place where you know there's no worry about pollution, there's no worry about um, lead problems with water and all that stuff that happens in lower income areas is a family of five, meaning that if he can support four other people, he can also support himself after the surgery, and his job is really good, as we can see from here. So we did a little bit of research onto major advertising companies and how much they make, and we can all see that these three, the these four are all American companies, big major advertising companies in the top 10. So if we assume that he does work for one of these or something similar, he's getting on average a six-figure salary, and if not six figures, this is 94,000, which is pretty darn close. Okay, so let's talk about the second claim that is dependency. Family are important. Has family to take care of him, and it depends like in the finance stuff. So there's people waiting for him at home, not only for like moral stuff, but also like for economic and because he needs to bring food to the table. So in the importance area, we have father figures are important. I mean, that's our like key piece on a family. And being a financial crippled home can affect the three daughters' growth. So we need money so these like girls can grow and be like potential future women in the, the modern uh, world. So over claim three, we looked at his health issues. So he had no major health issues other than his heart problems, which led to him being surgery. And he's not a smoker or drinker, which means that he has a relatively healthy body that has not been affected by his own choices. So for some research through this, um, according to the correlates, outcomes of post-transplant smoking and solid organ transplant recipients, it says that <coughs> transplant recipients were most likely to receive infections and diseases after the transplant had taken place, and smoking can escalate these problems to more serious issues. Um, additionally, according to the National Library of Medicine, alcohol can cause more cardiac complications, which can be more of an issue because after the surgery, we want him to have a healthy heart and not damage it more. So in conclusion, we ultimately reflect the candidate deep due to his financial ability to afford the surgery and the treatment after the process. We also select him because he has a family and he can help support his family as he's a large family of, uh, with three daughters and needs to support them as their college they get into growing up. Also, his health issues assure him assure us that he will not have any major issues likely in the near future. Um, and though despite each of the candidates all deserve this heart, we selected him ultimately because he had the best chance of survival and his life would affect the most people positively. Thank you.